Plasmodium. So you and your hubby decide to skip Paris for your honeymoon and go to a safari instead because who needs the Eiffel Tower when you can have close-up selfies with lions and tigers instead? However, you come back home looking like a human pincushion with bug bites everywhere, but you don't think it's a serious problem. It turns out some of those itchy souvenirs were from an infected female Anopheles mosquito that carries a parasite called Plasmodium that infects people with malaria. Soon enough, you'll notice that you've been feeling extremely weak, tired, and feverish lately, so you bust out the trusty chicken soup remedy your mom swears can cure everything from a common cold to a broken heart. You feel better afterwards, but when you wake up the following day, you feel like you've gone 12 rounds with an angry bull. Your muscles are sore and achy and your head is pounding like someone is driving a nail through it. Apparently, the plasmodium parasites are having a wild party in your bloodstream, multiplying like it's a competition. They literally took the Bible's verse, go forth and multiply, pretty seriously. If you do not head to the hospital immediately or get some anti-malarial drugs, your symptoms will advance to severe diarrhea, vomiting, blood loss, and jaundice, which means that your skin will turn extremely pale and your eyes will literally turn yellow like you're auditioning for a zombie movie. At the final stage of infection, malaria will enter your brain and cause seizures, confusion, acute kidney failure, and possibly death. So next time you're planning a honeymoon, maybe consider Paris after all. The worst you might get there is a pigeon with good aim, not a blood-sucking bug that turns your life into a medical drama. Giardia After your nasty car accident a few months ago, your therapist recommends swimming as a great recovery therapy for your damaged muscles. You think, if it's good enough for Michael Phelps, it's good enough for you, so you go for it. But there's a tiny, splashy problem. Swallowing pool water. Turns out this pool water isn't just H2O, it's a bustling underwater city of bacteria and worse, tiny colonies of the Giardia parasites throwing raver parties in the water. Once these tiny hitchhikers settle in your gut, they will start causing all sorts of mischief. It's like having rowdy party guests in your gut, knocking over furniture and leaving a mess everywhere they go. You would experience severe abdominal cramps and bloating as if a tiny mariachi band has set up camp in your belly and decided to play their greatest hits on repeat. All day, every day. Now you would start pooping constantly because your body is trying to flush the freeloaders out and the excessive pooping would lead to extreme weight loss. It's like having your own personal parasite-powered weight loss program. Except instead of feeling fabulous, you'll most likely feel like you've been hit by a truck. The only effective treatment for Giardia infection is antibiotics, or maybe you should just avoid swallowing pool water. Ascaris. Now, this particular parasite just loves to chill in the soil where you plant fruits and vegetables and would get into your bloodstream by laying eggs on every single plant there. As soon as the infected plant touches your lips, the parasite burrows its way into your mouth and heads straight to your intestinal walls. The first symptom would be the constant vomiting and going to the toilet like you made a promise to visit every 10 minutes. Now, you think it's just a mild case of food poisoning, but to be safe, you head to the hospital to get checked out. After your doctor checks your poop, they inform you that a roundworm called Ascaris has literally laid eggs everywhere inside your body like a full-blown work nursery complete with the two adult nannies. If you hadn't come in to get checked on, the eggs would have caused more damage to your intestines, liver, and lungs. The eggs would travel to your throat, get swallowed back down, and hatch into full-sized worms in the intestines just munching away on the contents of your stomach. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet, and your stomach linings are just the first appetizer. Pretty horrifying. Anthelmitic drugs are the only thing that can kick your uninvited guest away, but practicing safe hygiene is the best way to avoid infection. Wash your hands, fruits, and vegetables thoroughly before consumption. Tania Solium you have the ultimate dream job as a food critic, and every day restaurants worldwide invite you to come and rate their meals. Now, in one of your many tasting adventures, you're served undercooked pork, but the menu calls it rare steak, so you eat it all. Big mistake. 
You see, the so-called rare steak you just finished has Tania solium, aka pork tapeworm, swimming on it. Once this parasite enters your bloodstream and sets up camp, it starts growing and growing, sometimes reaching lengths that would make even the bravest sword swallower gasp. The symptoms of a Tania solium infection can be a roller coaster ride of discomfort. You might experience abdominal pain and digestive issues as if a tiny acrobat troop has set up their high wire act in your belly. And let's not forget nausea and vomiting, because what's a circus without a few death-defying stunts? Now you'll also start to lose weight drastically even though you eat like someone trying out for a heavyweight championship game. As the infection progresses, the tapeworm larvae will migrate to your brain, eyes, and muscles and form huge cysts that can cause impaired vision, possible blindness, epileptic seizures, severe headaches, and confusion. Eventually, you would lose control of your arm and leg muscles and quickly become bedridden like a vegetable. While this may all sound scary because literally worms about two to seven meters long are living and breathing inside your body, thanks to some heavy medications like paraziquintel that can literally paralyze and dissolve the worm, you can be saved from having a permanent roommate from hell. But just save yourself the whole painful experience by washing and cooking your steak properly. Sarcoptes scabii This pesky parasite can make your body feel like it's hosting an endless rave. Imagine you're out and about minding your own business when suddenly you feel a constant itch. At first, you brush it off as a harmless mosquito bite or a mild allergic reaction. Unfortunately, that seemingly innocent itch was the first sign that you had unknowingly invited a colony of Sarcoptes scabii mites responsible for the skin condition called scabies to your skin. These tiny party crashers are masters of infiltration and can hop from one person to another during close body contact. They can also hitch a ride if you use an infected person's clothing, bedding, or towels, and once they make themselves at home, you are in for a very uneventful itch party. The urge to scratch can be overwhelming, but beware, because scratching only fuels the party, and these mites thrive on chaos. As the infestation progresses, you might start noticing tiny raised burrows on your skin, forming a rash that would look like blisters and pimples. You would also notice thin, wavy lines on your skin, usually between your elbows, fingers, wrists, or other cozy skin folds, because these are where the mites are digging and planning their next move. Prescription cream like Scabicide to kill the mites and their eggs on your skin, and oral medication to flush them out internally is the only way to eliminate them. You should also start operation clean and wash all your clothes and bedding because chances are they are all infected. Bed bugs. Bed bugs are the actual definition of creepy crawlers. These little vampires love to snuggle up with humans at night, but instead of cuddles, they feast on your blood and leave you itchy and restless. It's like a horror movie where the monsters are tiny wingless and highly motivated to ruin your sleep. They literally invade your home by hitching rides on your luggage, clothes, and used furniture so the beautiful vintage couch you just ordered from Amazon may have its own parasite Uber service. These tiny wingless insects feed on warm-blooded animals, so humans are first on the menu. They would hide at the edges of your mattress and furniture and would just wait for you to hit the lights off and go to bed. The bed bug's bite would usually appear as tiny red itchy bumps, often in clusters like the bugs were having a picnic on your skin. Their bites are also accompanied by a lot of other symptoms like fever, skin rashes, and severe psychological effects. Because of the constant uncontrollable itching, you won't be able to sleep at all, and stress and anxiety may begin to affect every aspect of your life. You may even develop an obsession with bed bugs known as delusional parasitosis, which is a mental disorder when you are convinced that you are infested with parasites even when there is no evidence to show that the bed bugs are still in your homes. Getting rid of bed bugs can be challenging because they're very stubborn insects and can go for as long as 300 days without feeding. So your best option is to call in professional exterminators and you can reclaim your peaceful night's sleep. Want to learn more about how all these disturbing parasites can invade your system? Then you should join our Discord channel immediately for all the parasitic updates. Head lice. 
After a long day at work, you decide to visit a longtime friend who just came into town, but then you ended up crashing at their place. Now the next day, you quickly run her comb through your greasy hair so you can at least look a little presentable. However, a few minutes after using their comb, you start to itch your scalp. But you don't take it seriously because it doesn't seem like a big deal. It's time for you to go home, but throughout your one-hour ride home, the itching has intensified to an almost unbearable stage. It feels like someone released a truckload of dirt on your head and you can't stop scratching your scalp. But as you itch, you also start to feel a crawling sensation all over your scalp, so you try to pick it out. This is when you pick out a tiny crawling insect from your head. Apparently, your head has been invaded by a parasite called head lice, and it can be extremely uncomfortable. The first symptoms of lice infestation would start innocently enough. Then over time, you would start to itch with so much force and vigor. The constant and uncomfortable itching you feel is because the lice are busy sucking away at the blood in your scalp and laying eggs everywhere. Aside from the itching, you would also start to develop sores and red bumps all over your head. And because head lice are mostly active at night, you can also say goodbye to your beauty sleep because the itching would keep you up throughout the night. Getting rid of head lice can be very difficult, and unlike the popular belief that it can only be gotten from poor hygiene, you should know that the parasite doesn't discriminate based on cleanliness, because they are very happy multiplying and causing havoc in clean hair as much as dirty hair. Guinea Worm you live in a remote village where access to clean water is a luxury. On this fateful day, you were very thirsty, and with no clean water in sight, you decide to fuck around and take a refreshing sip out of that stagnant water that's been in front of your compound for days. Well, you have unknowingly ingested a tiny microscopic guinea worm larvae, but I guess it's extra protein. Fast forward to a few months later and you'll start to feel like you've been possessed by a tiny wriggling demon. That is because these tiny larvae have had enough time to transform and grow into a three inch long spaghetti-like worm literally coiled up inside your body. Talk about the ultimate roommate from hell. As if having a parasite wasn't bad enough, this little squatter is ready to pack up and leave right through your skin. First, you'll feel an excruciating burning sensation where the worm is trying to wriggle out, typically around your feet or leg joints. Soon, a large, itchy, red, swollen blister forms, turning your skin into a mini volcano of agony. On top of that, you'll also feel like you've ingested poison because there'll be constant vomiting and diarrhea, but it's really just the worm's toxins causing all this havoc. You are living in a horror movie and the climax is just about to begin. Now, when the blister eventually bursts open, the worm will slowly begin to emerge. The craziest thing is that you have to carefully and manually extract it a few centimeters at a time each day. The pain is so severe that yanking it out all at once is a big no-no because breaking the worm could make things even worse, and the extraction process can last for weeks. Even after the worm is completely extracted and the large open sore gradually heals, the scarring from the ulcer can damage the tissues and cause permanent disability, especially if joints are involved. It's like the worst in-house party guest that leaves your body thrashed long after it's gone. Paragonomyces. Being an adventurous foodie with a particular love for seafood can mean only one thing. You are willing and ready to eat even the weirdest looking sea urchin. So this summer, you decide to hit Southeast Asia to explore its culinary delights, especially its famous seafood dishes. On getting there, you head to the local market and quickly spot a seafood vendor selling raw crayfish, another local favorite. Blissfully unaware that these crustaceans can sometimes carry the larvae of Paragonimus fluke. You order two plates and finish it all. Now your belly begins to feel a little bit off, but you dismiss it as a mild food reaction and carry on with your seafood adventure. You return home and start feeling increasingly unwell and soon develop a persistent cough, fever, and severe abdominal pains, which you still blame on allergies. However, after about three weeks, you start coughing up rusty colored sputum, so you rush to the hospital, and after some tests, the doctors discover something concerning. Your lungs are inflamed and filled with odd-looking cysts and boils. If left untreated, the parasites would migrate to your brain, causing severe headaches, episodes of seizures, convulsions, and stiffness of your neck muscles. You will also develop painful lumps under the skin where the flukes have moved to, 
and the red, swollen areas will be filled with pus. The final stage of infection would fill your lungs with fluid and would hinder them from providing enough oxygen to the body, which could lead to permanent lung damage. Honestly, that is just too much of a problem for a plate of raw crayfish. Sleeping Sickness it's that time of year when you and your excavation team visit all sorts of remote jungles for new discoveries, and this year, the Amazon rainforest is next on the list. On your first day in the forest, you are bitten by a tsetse fly, but you swat it away thinking it was just another insect bite, and you continue your work. A few days later, you notice a painful sore on your arm from the bite site, which gradually becomes red and swollen. But you still don't think much about it, so you just apply the soothing balm you packed for your trip. Well, that was not a smart move, because the tsetse fly that bit you released a parasite called Trypanosoma brucei into your bloodstream. After about four to six weeks, things start to get really weird. Your neck will get swollen and you'll begin to experience bouts of fever, headache, and muscle pain. You would also start to lose weight excessively no matter how much you eat. You'll also spend your whole day sleeping and feeling extremely tired, and when you're not sleeping, you're irritable and forgetful and can hardly make sensible statements anymore. Soon enough, hallucinations and confusion would set in. It's like your brain decided to pack up and leave you alone in the jungle. When you are eventually rushed to the hospital, it is confirmed you've been bitten by an infected tsetse fly. If you're not put on malarsoprol medication immediately, you'll literally fall asleep one day and never wake up. Well, at least that's one way to avoid the alarm clock. Babesiosis Imagine you're on a hiking trip exploring the great outdoors, enjoying the fresh air and taking in the beautiful scenery when an Ioxides tick decides to join the party, latching onto your skin without you even noticing and squirming its way into your bloodstream. Little do you know, this tick is carrying a sneaky passenger, the Babesia microtea parasite. Weeks go by after your hiking adventure and you start feeling under the weather, but at first it seems like a mild flu because of the usual tiredness, fever, and muscle pain. In addition to that, sleeping at night would feel like someone literally opened the doors of hell inside your bedroom because you would always wake up drenched in sweat no matter how cold it was. You would also have little desire to eat and start losing weight drastically. As your condition worsens, the parasite will practically start destroying your red blood cells and your eyes will start to develop a yellowish tinge. If left untreated, the infection can lead to complications such as low blood pressure, liver and kidney problems, and spleen rupture, especially in individuals with weakened immune systems, the elderly, or those without a spleen. However, if you are given the proper treatment on time, then there's light at the end of the tunnel because your fever will reduce and your energy will return to normal over time.